Good morning. Um, my name is Alan Carlisle and I'm a hydraulic engineer here at Volkert. And today um, we want to discuss another edition of River Geeks and talk about some grading underneath a proposed bridge replacement. Here at our subject site, we're out in the field today getting some geomorphology information um, to go in our level one qualitative analysis. And we want to document the conditions here at the bridge. As you can see at this site, there's some pretty vertical banks here um, at the indent. And so this existing bridge is scheduled to be replaced. And we will most likely call for our proposed alternative to have an abutment setback, at least one channel width um, for the indent. And you may be wondering, well, how do I um, produce that in my model? How do, um, because our client likes for there to be at least three foot of vertical depth. Um, of clearance or excavation between the proposed low cord and the ground level. And you may be wondering with an existing survey, how can I easily produce that excavated area set 80 feet or so back from the channel to use within your SMS model? Don't worry, we'll have that coming up when we head back into the office. <laughs> We're back in the office after our morning site visit and what you're looking at now is SMS um, our 2D modeling software. I, I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank Blake and Kyle for setting up River Geeks and um, letting us see the ins and outs of getting getting a model stood up and executed um, and everything that goes into that. I'm, I'm honored they asked me to be a guest speaker and I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity. So again, this is our existing mesh that you guys see here. Um, it includes our existing survey and LIDAR with the road bed and the side ditches coming in. We're looking in the downstream direction. You can see those, those vertical steep slopes of the channel right up here on the end. And our proposed goal for our, our proposed bridge, as I mentioned, is to get some setback to have that excavation through the bridge for each approach span. Um, just to get some clearance with the main channel for any future um, channel movement vertical or laterally um, that may arise from upstream or downstream conditions such as a head cut. What you see here is the plan view looking at a LIDAR um, of the existing bridge and the existing survey. You, the black outline is our proposed bridge. It's going to have three spans of 80 feet first span, second span, third span. Again, we chose this span arrangement as our proposed recommendation here conceptually for our client, just due to we get five to 10 foot of separation with the existing top bank. We also get a channel setback um, for this vertically unstable stream. Um, so here I wanna show you, this is using ArcMap right now is what you're looking at. You can also use QGIS, so any GIS software. I know QGIS is freeware. We're gonna use HECRAS today, which is freeware. And we're gonna use these tools to produce, um, again, a proposed surface for our SMS two-dimensional model. The first thing you'll see is I have went ahead and contoured this surface simply in your Arc toolbox, or there's a similar function in QGIS, you can go to a raster surface and you can click contour list. You just choose your raster or your surface that you have for your existing conditions SMS. And then you can select the value um, that you want to contour. In this case, it's 327.5 for this site. As I mentioned out in the field, that allows for three foot of excavation underneath the proposed low cord just for bridge inspections for um, future employees for the client, they can go out and inspect this bridge. Um, they need that three foot of vertical separation. Again, we don't have that currently with the existing roadway embankment. As I mentioned, we're widening the bridge to accommodate um, one channel setback. You would just simply put your contour interval in, hit add and then hit okay. Of course, the GIS software in the background produces this contour. I, I went ahead and did this so we can have this for this exercise and it, and it probably won't take that long here it's loading up now you can tell the results of the blue show right back on top of what i had already done the next step is since this is the area we're excavating to 327.5 we just kind of do that so we'll have an upstream limit 
here and a downstream limit here to put our cross sections for excavation without modifying these roadside ditches. And that's important to ensure positive drainage at the site. So I've already laid out a couple of cross sections for our use. I, I will walk through it, but let me change this color so you guys can see it better. We'll make them orange and make them big. Um, these four lines right here that you see, they since our bridge is three at 80, 240 feet long, I went ahead and added two cross sections right at the face of the bridge. And I'll get, get into that in a minute. And then here is our upstream cross section and downstream cross section. And these are simply shape files that I, that you can edit, start editing. Um, let me choose that cross section. You would hit your pencil here to create the features and you can simply go to here and start drawing them in. Um, one thing to note is I kind of wrapped around the edge of the ditch here and the main channel. Just, I don't want to obstruct this confluence right here between these guys. So I kind of came around, then, then I went perpendicular across the channel and then kind of wrapped back around this contour. I did the same over here. Um, so we're, we're going to go ahead and use this contour and we're going to look at some of the um, station elevations that we're trying to achieve under the bridge in Excel now. So I'm going to flip over there. And it's good to go ahead on the front end and, and get your data ready before we bring it into RAS Mapper. So I went ahead and made a channel at the bridge we're trying to achieve. As I mentioned, um, we're trying to get to a 327.5, which will require some excavation of the existing roadbed. Our EG, I've plotted up over here. It's in black dotted line. And I've plotted the piers, that the proposed piers for 3 at 80. You'll see those equidistant um, from the channel. And our proposed flow line here at the bridge is going to be in blue. Of course, you can just use station elevation and plot that up because this will ultimately go into the HECRAS cross section. Take note that I've showed the um, typical section here of the beam type we're using, uh, FIB36, and I'm laying that on the low cord. So I took the time to go ahead here at the bridge ends and go ahead and map out this cap, the sloping abutment down to the excavation elevation, and then we'll go ahead and, and take that out and then make our channel as well here at the bridge. For the cross sections upstream and downstream, it's the same geometry, except I left out the cap and the sloping abutment, and I'm going to let the program um, interpolate from this cross section into this cross section and up to that elevation. And it'll make for a smooth transition as you head into the entrance of your bridge and then as you exit your bridge. And I just kind of wanted to show this. You'll have an idea of cross section view of what we're aiming for. The next step would be to go ahead and get your HECRAS model up. Um, you've probably made one. It's good to have a one dimensional model for boundary conditions or calibration um, or and even just a, as a comparison with the 2D results to make sure they make sense. So for this particular project, we did that. Um, so here's just an existing conditions geometry editor. Um, what you're going to do is save this as another geometry. And I'm just going to call it surface alternative three. Yes, we're going to copy over it. What I'm going to do is bring those cross sections in that I showed you in the art GIS earlier into this geometry editor. To accomplish that, GIS tools RAS mapper from your RAS menu. Slide this over. Make this where you guys can see it. And ultimately what you can do is just start editing this surface, all three that I made. I can just start editing the geometry Right click on cross sections, import features from shape file. So that cross section shape file that I made, I can go right to it here in my project folder. Bring it in and click import. You'll see them show up on the screen. It's good at this juncture to go ahead and update their river stations. So you can do all attributes except terrain. And then I even come back and just update update the terrain as well, just so it has some data in there until we change it with our Excel data. We're going to stop editing. Yes. And yeah, it's going to renumber it. 
At this juncture, you can go back into your geometry window, zoom in. You can tell the four cross sections that have appeared. If we want to now delete every other cross section in here so we can make our surface just for these extents that we delineated to burn back on top of our existing surface. So file, I'm sorry, edit, delete. You can delete the nodes at this point. And technically, you can just select every node and then unselect the ones that we added. It'll delete all the superfluous cross sections we don't need now that we just need these four. Save that. Last step is to come back into RAS Mapper. And it has this neat little tool called channel interpolation. And we're going to go ahead and interpolate from the um, cross section in the cross section in. So we're going to do the cross section in over banks. So we'll go ahead and put in our channel and bridge data. Um, put in the cross section at the bridge and then the one upstream and downstream from the geometry editor. You can simply open that up and just paste it in. Don't worry about the banks, because as I mentioned, we're going to do the whole cross section. So we don't really need to know where the bank is. And then we'll grab the one. Excuse me, let me reverse that. I did the ones upstream and downstream. And I need to come back. Now I'll do the ones at the bridge. That includes the in the indent caps and the sloping abutment. Go back and fix that other one that I accidentally edited. good and now i have all of these edited it's simply going to make this geometry shape into a surface through that bridge opening as i mentioned we go back in ras mapper right click on the geometry that you're working in export layer we're going to export a terrain which makes it a tiff for the overbanks and channels save it in your project folder Say this is all three. And I'm going to do a one foot rest or cell size. I'm um, just to get a good, um, a good surface there that has good definition. And now we're done with RAS. We're going to minimize that. Our last step is to come back in our GIS software. And then I'm going to import that raster that I just exported, I called it channel alt three. You can see it appears geo reference wise right over our bridge surface. Um, the last step is to burn this surface on top of the existing survey. And to accomplish that, there's another tool. Uh, I'm sure there's one in, G in QGIS, but this is called mosaic to new raster. Simply select your existing survey, your new channel that you've burned in under the bridge. And again, select another location. Make sure you name it, have the right projection. Select OK. It'll, in no time, it'll have your finished surface here with that um, new channel burned in in the new excavation. So when I cut that on to see, you can tell um, when I interpolate a line along it through that area, you first you can tell in the color ramp how this is all one elevation that it excavated down. But you can also tell if you were to cut a cross section through there, 
you're at your existing grade, you come down where your cap would be, your sloping abutment, you've got your excavated area at 327.5. Just to show y'all what that looks like in SNS, I went ahead and imported it. And you can see from a 3D view that you, that you capture where the cap would sit, that sloping abutment, that excavated area, plus the piers that that were taken out of the mesh and then this you just have replicated that on both sides and that kind of gives you a quick easy way without having to do much um, autocad or um, open roads grading you know, or micro station grading that you can use these tools that are that are freeware to go ahead and create you a surface through the model i hope you all enjoyed this presentation um, and we'll hit subscribe and like down below and we'll see you next time on river geeks